Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today we're going to go to Psycheana Lesson 2 from Frank B. Robinson, or Dr. Frank B. Robinson, who wrote this amazing course in 20 Lessons, which is a great way to learn the law of attraction and reality creation in an orderly way. It's very advanced. If you listen to the first lesson, you would have been just repeating a simple affirmation by this point, which is, I believe in the power of the living God. You can listen to these lessons separately. They don't have to be listened to in order. Each of them is like a general episode of the podcast. So don't be concerned if you haven't listened to the other lessons. This is just as powerful and has its own message. Each lesson has a unique teaching and you can go back and do it in order someday if you want, but it's pretty amazing in either case. I read a little bit more about Frank B. Robinson after I did that last reading because it was very profound and there is an interesting story and I read some of his autobiography and how the name came about. So the more I'm reading about this, this feels authentic and very powerful. They called him the mail order prophet because he had this course sent in the mail back in the thirties. So, and it reads like it's a more modern take, a very modern metaphysical take. Advanced course number one, lesson two. Dear friend and student. In this lesson, I am going to show you just a few of the things to you and possible to you now. The chances are many to one that to date you have never even suspected that many of the good things of life might be yours. You found yourself placed on this earth some years ago and you accepted life as it was given to you. You were handed certain cards when you first came into being and to the best of your ability, you played those cards in this game called life. It probably has never dawned on you that if you did not hold a winning hand, you could draw other cards. It is my happy privilege, however, to tell you that such is the case. For life is a card game. You draw when you enter the game. And you play accordingly. Most of us, however, seem to be laboring under the delusion that whatever cards were first dealt us are the only cards we can ever draw. Such, however, is not the case. You may say that heredity enters into the playing of this game of life. The heredity card may have been dealt you and you may not like it. Then perhaps the circumstance card was also dealt you. Perhaps you don't like that card either. The card of poor education may also have fallen in front of you and you don't like that card either. Perhaps through no fault of your own, a college education was denied you. Well, I'm not so sure that you have missed too much through that for college bred men are in every bread line. And if you trace history back, you are very apt to find that those who have forged ahead to the greatest heights were either men of no college education or men who achieved in spite of their college education. Many are the cards which may have been dealt you when you first entered this game of life. You had nothing to say about these cards either. You did not deal. You could do nothing else than accept the cards as the dealer gave them to you. And to date, the chances are you are highly dissatisfied with this game. The other fellow seems to be having all the luck, while you seem to be always holding the losing hand. Well, in this lesson, my friend, let me just point out to you a few of the things which may be accomplished by you. And I mean you, whoever you are that is reading this lesson. For never was a truer word spoken than this. You are the master of your fate. You are the captain of your soul. And if you go on in this game of life, playing with inferior cards, it is simply because you want to. For the cards may be changed. Remember that. And I have contracted with you to show you how to change them. I know how to show you that, and I do not know it. Just 
in an abstract way, but I have proven to myself first that I do know the way. I know the law involved, and let me say to you, with all the earnestness at my command, that this great God law is no respecter of persons. Have I made that clear? The mighty creative God law of the universe is no respecter of persons. Nor is the power of that law limited. The only thing that keeps you from having an abundance of health, wealth, and happiness is your ignorance of this mighty law. It's not the fault of the law, but the fault of you. I am not blaming you, for I did not know how the law worked until I was 40 years of age. But I know now, and so will you before you finish this course of instruction with me. Now just a word about your religious persuasions, for I don't want to hurt your feelings, nor tread on your religious toes. I may do so, but if I do it, it will only be because your religious persuasion clashes with the truth as I know it to exist. I think, however, that you are a broad enough man or woman to see that no matter what system of religion you have had thrust upon you, or have knowingly embraced, it has come far short of providing you with the happiness, health, and wealth which things you so much desire. For most of our present systems of religion are based on fear. This is not our fault at all, for they were built on fear. They all originated away back ages ago, when the human race was a very fearful and superstitious race. Our forefathers were brought up to fear God. They were told that unless they feared God, they could either roast and fry in hellfire, or go through a session in purgatory, and millions of good, honest souls who could not accept that theory were burned alive at the stake, millions of them. That could not be done today, however, for the human race is progressing. In fact, it has made more progress the last 25 years than it had made in the previous thousand years. And as the race progresses, this rotten thing called fear is being taken by the throat and laid on its back, where it cannot do any more harm to humans. Fear of God is now out of the question. For any God that you need to be afraid of is no God for you. There is no such God in the first place, and even if there were, you wouldn't want Him, would you? Most of that fear proposition, however, is a relic of the Dark Ages and is not believed in anymore. People are progressing past that stage. If you could put all fear out of your life, my friend, there would be absolutely no limit to the heights to which you could climb, none at all. But as long as that snake is lurking in your makeup, you probably will be handicapped in your fight for the best things in life. Let me tell you something else here, which is of vital importance to your whole future. The very moment in which you are able to discard all fear, in that moment you will find a something which will open up to you an entirely new vista of life. It will thrill you. It will raise your hopes a million miles in the sky. For you will begin to faintly realize the magnitude of not of any power within you, but of the creative God law of the universe, which is all around you and in existence for the fulfilling of your every right desire. Think that over for a little while, my friend, for that is exactly the fact governing all success and happiness. These blessings of life do not lie in the fear realm at all. They lie in the realm in which man finds himself when he dismisses fear and begins to learn who and what he really is. They are found when a man or woman first realizes his or her vital connections with the God law, existing here and now. That's where these good things come from, and the law itself is the power which brings them into manifestation. For when a human soul gets that first 
faint glimpse of the God power at his disposal. A strange new consciousness will take complete possession of that soul. A power he heretofore knew nothing about will possess him, and he will begin to realize that he is master of his own destiny, captain of his own soul. I have on file many telegrams from students who have awakened to that power in their own lives. Last week, the males delayed one of our lessons to a student in Switzerland, and we received a cable from him asking what had become of the lesson. Telegrams have come to us from many different places, telling us that a certain lesson has not arrived there on time, probably delayed in the mail. So anxious are these good students of mine to learn more of this mighty power that money seems to be no object, and they do not hesitate one moment about sending us a cable even from halfway around the globe. That is what a man or woman experiences when the God law of health, success, and prosperity begins to make its power known in the life. And these things, my friend, are for you. All I ask is that you play the game with us and play it fairly and squarely. If you will do that, I promise to show you the existence of the greatest power this world has ever seen or ever will see. And I promise further to show you how to apply this mighty God law for success, happiness, and health in your own circumstances. Isn't that worth working for? Don't you think that's worth playing the game for? I do. You have heard the story of the two brothers who were riding along a country lane in a small car. They were on a visit to their mother who was staying at a neighboring ranch. There was little traffic on the road, and they did not expect to meet any other car. But flashing around a corner came a big truck, upsetting the little car and pinning the younger of the two brothers under it. This little fellow was only 11 years old. The brother with him was 14. On heating the truck, did not even stop to see what damage it had done, and the elder brother found himself there miles from health and with this little brother pinned under the car. What could he do? There was no one near him to help lift the car off little Benny. He tore his hair, he cried, and agony was written all over the poor boy's face at the thought of his little brother's helplessness. Finally, despair creeping over the face of the little fellow pinned under the car, he said, Billy, why don't you try to lift the car off me? Oh, but I can't lift that whole car, said Billy. But you haven't tried yet, moaned little Benny. This seemed to bring Billy to his senses, and he said, Benny, I've just got to get that car off you. And in agony of despair creeping over him, he seized the car, and with a strength that seemed superhuman, he lifted and he lifted that car off little Benny. Where the strength came from, he did not know, but it came. And this crude illustration will help to show you what I mean when I say to you that the great God law in existence here and now is abundantly powerful enough to put you where you should be and will do so in the very moment you are in, earnest enough to comply with the simple, easy conditions governing that law. For the first time in Billy's life, he realized that there was a strange power at his disposal which he had known nothing about before. Something awakened him, and in the stress of need, he did what he thought was impossible. And to you sitting around the table of life and playing the game the best you know how, I say that this same something can also awaken you to your vast possibilities. I say more than that, I say, it will awaken you to your vast possibilities and will begin doing that in the moment you want to be awakened. So in these lessons, my friend, be sure that you are in earnest. Be sure that you mean business. Be sure that you are playing the game fairly, squarely with me. And I promise you, your eyes will be opened and you will thank me from the bottom of your heart forever calling this course of instruction to your intention. Let me remind you that this course of instruction is entirely different from anything you have ever before read in your life. You 
have heard a lot about this power within and that power within. And so I don't want you to make the mistake of thinking that I'm going to tell you to look within for help, for I'm going to do no such thing. There is no power within you that can help you to climb to the top. Many thousands have thought there was, but on trying to find this power, they find it conspicuous by its absence. The theory is a beautiful one. The only trouble with it being that it does not work. For the power does not lie within at all. It lies without. It's in what I choose to call the great without. And as we travel along this little road together for a few months, you will know full well that what I am saying to you is the truth. You will also know before we have traveled very far together that the very best thing in life are for you, if you want them. I'm sure of my ground when I say to you that there is no height too great to be climbed if you will learn the secret of the power of the God law operating for your benefit. What is it you want to do? Just where do you want to climb? Just how happy do you want to be? Well, brother and sister, it lies in your own hands. Through the knowledge and use of this mighty God law, I am here telling you about. So at this point, it will be well to suggest that you make up your mind that you are going to be and do just exactly what you want to be and do. It will be a good idea here to get your backbone all polished up and get it ready for action, for you are going to need it. My backbone won't help you, neither will yours unless you use it. So shake yourself together and get ready to start on the road which leads to health, wealth, and happiness. For this road lies just a little bit ahead of you, and you will need your spine and your muscle and your head all working together to help you use the God law I shall show you. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you can just lie easily on your oars, trusting to some power or other to transport you on flowery beds of ease to realms of health, wealth, and happiness. If you think that, you're going to be badly fooled. I promise you that. But if you really mean business, if you really want to do, then come along, for I can show you how to utilize the greatest power or law the world has ever seen to help you do what you want to do. For it takes men and women to achieve. There is no place in life for a laggard. There is no place in life for a lazy man or woman. There is no place in life for the shiftless. They never get anywhere and never will. And if it should be that, you have been just a little bit on the lazy order to date, then get down to brass tacks, clench your fist, grit your teeth, and say, by God, I'm going to do it. I do not mean this phrase in any slangy or profane manner at all, for if you do it, if you do achieve, it will be certainly by the God law, and no other way remember this. In other words, mere wishing will get you nowhere. The God law always works where it is needed to work. But how can it work in your life if you do not want it to? You can take a magnet and try to make it pick up sawdust until the crack of doom. And when it cracks, you will never have made that magnet lift one grain of sawdust. But put some iron filings near that magnet and see how quickly it will get busy. The law of magnetism is in that magnet. You cannot see it, but it's there, just the same. It means nothing to sawdust. However, for the law of magnetism does not work in the case of a magnet and sawdust, neither does the law of success work in the life of a man who is not anxious enough to be helped to try and help himself. For such a man, first, must have the desire to be helped. He must first come to the law and recognize its presence. Then, when that has been done and when the desire to be helped is there, the law will work because it can work. Do you see that? The conditions have been complied with and there is then no limit to the future of the man who so complies with those simple conditions. For the only condition the God law requires is the one condition that you really want the law to help you. And that's probably your normal condition, isn't it? There are very few men and women in the world who do not want to get ahead. There are mighty few who do not really desire to achieve things. 
There are some, of course, but the chances are that you are not one of those. Otherwise, you never would have enrolled for this course of instruction. So I'm taking it for granted that you really do desire and want to get ahead. You really want health. You really want perfect happiness. And you really want perfect success. All right. The conditions under which this God law works have been met. So from now on, we shall begin our climb up the road that brings, at the end of it, the realization of these things. You probably wondered a little at the little affirmation I had you repeat in the first lesson. You might have thought, well, what good can that do to me? If such a thought entered your head, let me say to you that in the making that little affirmation, you were beginning to use the most dynamic power you have ever tried to use. You know absolutely nothing of the power behind that little exercise. You know nothing of the power of such a thought, and I cannot blame you. You have no experience with such a thought, and you also look upon a thought as just something that comes and goes through your head, meaning nothing. But say, brother, if you only knew now what I know about the power of a thought, or about the power of many thoughts, you would look with amazement on these little exercises, I assure you. If you could but faintly realize what a thought really is, say you would be liable to up half the night doing the little exercises I asked you to do. For let me say to you here that a thought is one of the most dynamic things you have ever experimented with. A thought is a thing, an actual thing. It can be weighed. You did not know that, did you? But thoughts can be weighed, and that fact certainly proves them to be things. But, and listen well to me here, thoughts are more than things. They are part of the dynamic God law I am showing you. Did you grasp that? Read it again. Now read it again. Now lay this lesson down for five minutes and think about what I have just said to you. Go ahead, lay the lesson down on your knees, close your eyes, and try to realize that thoughts are part of the mighty God law which created this universe millions of years ago and which sustains it every moment and more than that which sustains you with it. Now you have the lesson in your hand and perhaps the thing I have just told you has opened your eyes a little. They will be opened many times in this course, my friend. I promise you that for never before has this God law been described and told about as I am dealing with it here. And you probably can see now why it is that my lessons went around the world into 67 countries inside a year. Just think of it. A thought is a spiritual power and a part of the creative God law responsible for every created thing. In fact, if you can grasp this, let me tell you that thought is the manifestation of the God law in your own life. In fact, there is no other way the spiritual God law can operate and commune with you in your waking moments except through the power of what you call a thought. We shall see later that thoughts are not what we have to date supposed them to be. They are something far more potent than that. To date, not much attention has been paid to thoughts. But I assure you, my friend, that we shall pay lots of attention to them now on. I shall show you a little later the existence of a thinking something in the atmosphere all around you. I shall show you that this thinking something comes from a millions and probably billions of miles away from here. So please accept this statement at face value and go accordingly. I want you to check every thought from this moment on that ever enters your mind. And more than that, I want you to exercise a strict censorship over every thought you ever think. You say, but Dr. Robinson, can I do that? You bet you can. You will have to if you go very far with me. And if you get very f many of this world's best things, but you will be glad to do it for, as you will see, there is no work entailed at all in governing your thoughts. Not any. Some say, yes, but doctor, thoughts come into my head and I can't help that. How about that? No, you cannot help thoughts coming into your head, but you can prevent their staying in your head, can't you? Of course you can, and this is something you must do. 
I strongly suspect that if you have not so much success in life, it is because you have never thought success. You have had no reason to. You just naturally have been playing the cards you were dealt when you sat in on the game, and so have never even faintly suspected that you, by the exercise of any known law, could ever achieve success. So you never let any thought of success enter into your head, did you? Well, we'll change that from now on, for from this moment I want you to exercise the very strictest censorship over every thought that ever attempts to build a nest in your head. A bird can light on your doorstep, but it doesn't take you very long to shoo it away, does it? The same thing with a thought. In your last lesson, which was the first in this course, I gave you certain little things to do on retiring. You did not know when just why I was doing that, did you? But you begin to see now, don't you? Now listen to me, tonight when you retire, I want you to relax every muscle, lie as limp as a log in bed. Close your eyes. There's always in every man's closed eyes a certain area which, when you learn how to find it, is the very thin veil between you and the God law of the universe. I may show you later how to penetrate that veil. This veil, it was that Edison penetrated a little before he died. You will remember that he exclaimed, It's very beautiful over there. This man, and incidentally hundreds of others, have caught a faint glimpse of beyond the veil. And while it may take you some time to get used to absolutely relaxing your body and just lying limp as a log, when you do learn to do that, you will not have so much trouble in finding that bright spot I spoke to you about. Sometimes I think I should call it a white spot. At any rate, it won't be very long before you know what it is. Although if you have never attempted anything like this before, it may be some time before you get that white spot. There is nothing mysterious about this at all. Nothing mystic, nothing supernatural. It is perfectly natural. In fact, one of the most natural things I know of is for a man to begin to realize that the living God law is an actual thing which can be contacted here and now by every normal man and woman. Would you wish me to believe that this great God power has thrown this universe with you and me on it into space and left us all here to shift for ourselves? Would you ask me to believe? No, my friend, that did not happen. And this mighty creative God law not only put us here, but stayed here itself with us. And more than that, it is still here with us waiting for a chance to do for us whatever right and proper thing we need. Do you need wealth? The God law can give it to you. Do you need health? The God law can give it to you. Do you need happiness? The God law can give it to you. You would not attempt to tell me that it could not, would you? You would not ask me to believe that the intelligence capable of making such a scheme of things as this beautiful world and yon beautiful heavens could not give you and me wealth, health, and happiness, would you? It would be useless for you to tell me that, for my experience has been different. I know better. And besides, if this mighty sustaining intelligence, this creative God law is so close to you that you could not get away from it if you wanted to, do you not think it can more than give you these things? You have never suspected before that such a power was at your right hand, have you? Well, it is, brother. And before we get through these lessons, you will know that it is. And what a difference that will make to you, brother or sister. <laughs> you are at this point beginning to get a faint glimpse of the true light as it exists. And you can already see that it is more than likely that you yourself will be able to use this mighty God law. There is also coming to you as you read this renewed hope as you begin to faintly grasp 
the staggering possibilities which are yours as you realize that it is possible for you to instantly contact this mighty God law as it is. There is also coming to you now the impression that I know how to lead you aright and you have mentally said to yourself, this fellow knows what he's talking about and I assure you I do. There is not one single thing that can keep you from either wealth, health or happiness. If you use this mighty creative God law as it may be used, now poverty and ill health and failure are about to be kicked out of the door. It doesn't seem possible, does it? And how happy it makes one feel to know that no matter who they are, they can use for their own health, wealth and happiness the very same God law that created them and get in touch with this God law instantly. Now about these thoughts and the pre-retiring exercise, remember absolutely at rest, every muscle lacks, just like a log of wood. Then the thoughts turn to the white area on the field of vision through the closed eyes and a simple resting in that position, keep your eyes on that white spot and over and over again mentally repeat, I am finding the power of the living God. Direct that sentence into the very depths of your mentality, right into the white spot. There's a scientific reason for all this, but you just do it. Remember all the while that a thought is part of the creative God law and you yourself are now using this mighty God law for the first time in your life. In the morning on awakening, take your deep, long breaths and right away start the same line of thought and keep it up. Do not say it out loud, but just simply keep all negative thoughts out of your head by keeping it filled with this thought. Do you see what I am doing now? I don't want you to ever let one single thought of failure, ill health or poverty enter your head. Never mind how sick you are. Never mind how poor you are. Never mind how unhappy you are. And never mind how big a failure you are. Keep this one thought in your mind to the exclusion of all other thoughts for the next two weeks. Remember, you are beginning to put into operation the spiritual God law which can change all those things for you. And every day you keep this one thought uppermost in your mind. You are one day near the realization of your desires. Remember that as you walk down the street, throw out your chest, fill your lungs and keep the thought in your head. I am finding the power of the living God. Don't bother your head at this time with who and what God is. You will find that out later. Just now, keep this thought uppermost all the time, for it is a fact. If there comes a time when you have the chance in your business hours, get alone, close your eyes, and with a relaxed body, look directly into the center of your being and say this affirmation of truth. Then, not only say it, but realize it. And I'm here to say to you, my friend, that the power that is to come into your life will knock you off your feet when you look back and see the change which has taken place. Realize that it is a fact that you are even now very close to the power of the living God. This realization will grow and grow upon you as you progress and with the realization will come into your life a power, the God power, which can override every obstacle, can thrust aside every want and can heal every condition of ill health. There has never been known to exist a power which could even faintly begin to approach this power of the living God. So do your study well. I know the same God law lifted me from out of this quagmire of failure to brilliant success. And it didn't take very long to do it either. And the very methods you are using are the same ones I used. Remember that. And I am happy as I leave you at the end of this second lesson, for I know that after you have read it and after you have begun to realize your closeness to the greatest power the world has ever seen, you will be as happy as I am. For you will begin to see the actual realization of your hopes and desires 
For years, perhaps, you thought it could not be, and now you know it can be. It's your happiness and success. I'm after, not mine. I have mine already. You have yours to get, and through my teachings, the way is to be shown you, and that makes me very happy, for there is no more noble work in the world than to show men and women their relationship to the creative law, at work now as ever throughout the whole universe. For when men and women begin to get a glimpse, a faint glimpse of that power, their lives are revolutionized and their hearts desires fulfilled. At this point, I must leave you till you receive the next lesson. In the next lesson, we shall deal with the story of the creation of man. It is astonishing what a lot of light comes to man when he begins to realize who and what he actually is. And this you have never known yet. To date, not a single soul has put into print the story of the creation of man as you will learn it in your next lesson. All of these lessons are charged with a dynamic spiritual power and the next one I consider perhaps one of the most interesting and important of them all. It has caused more comment than any other lesson I have ever written. So look forward to it. In the meantime, let the simple little exercises become a part of your mental life. You can't even faintly conceive at this point what can be done through the power of concentrated thought, nor can you conceive of the dynamic power of the God law. And all I'm asking you here is that you do as I ask you to and begin to put this mighty spiritual God law into action in your own life. Don't waste any time in foolish conversations. Don't be vulgar or rude. Let the best instincts and impulses in you come to the surface. Perhaps you are a profane man. And if you are, let me suggest that this is very foolish and unnecessary. Don't do it. I'm not speaking to you now as any sky pilot, for I assure you I am not on that order. I am talking common sense and decency to you, and besides, the cleaner you are, both physically and mentally, the more surely will the God law work in your life. As you progress, you will find that this mighty producing law is becoming very real to you, and at that time you are not very apt to waste much time or many words in useless and foolish conversation. Don't try to sprout any wings on your shoulder blades, for wings were meant to grow on a duck, not on a man, and you will never have any wings growing on you either, here or hereafter. Just be decent while you are studying with me. Be clean, be honest, and in two weeks' time, I shall be with you again and take you one more step into this intensely interesting and profitable study cordially your friend, Frank B. Robinson. Points of special interest in Lesson 2. 1. If you are not satisfied with the cards dealt you in the game of life, you may change them. 2. There is at your disposal, through the inherent God law, a wealth of unseen and hitherto unrecognized power. You have never suspected that power there, but under the stress of some emergency, you have seen flashes of it. That unseen power is there for your daily use. It is a sleeping giant, and it is in existence for your eternal success and happiness if you use it for those things. Before the God law can work, the conditions governing its operation must be met by you if it is to operate in your life. Remember that. What is the one condition governing the operation of that God law? desire for those good things and a belief in the law itself. You believe in the intelligence that created this world, do you not? Then recognize the fact that this same power is still here and still operating, wherever given a chance to operate. 4. A thought is a thing, and a very powerful thing, too. Let no negative thoughts ever roost in your hair. Shove them out as fast as they come in. No harm can be done by their just flitting through your mind, for you cannot stop thinking if you want to. The harm comes from letting these negative fear thoughts stay there. So don't allow them to roost 
in your mind for one second if you faithfully doing the little mental exercises i prescribe there will be no room for the fear thoughts for two thoughts cannot occupy the same mind at the same time no two things can occupy the same place at the same time you were taught in school that works in the thought realm if you don't believe it try it sometime try to think of two things at the same time so that's the end of advanced course number one lesson two of psychiana so far it's progressed wonderfully there are some very unique things that he is saying to note that we may have discussed a little bit he is saying that god is perhaps a billion miles away and that it's the great without so we'll see how he brings that together and i have not heard of looking for the white spot in sleep or when your eyes are closed that also is interesting i may start integrating that into my sleep meditations anyway but i really like the affirmation that he's giving it's a slow process an unfoldment in an understanding of the power of the living god i am finding the power of the living god before we said i believe in the power and now we're saying i'm finding so it feels like we're taking the next step first you believe and then you start to find it so i really love this idea of these tiered affirmations building upon itself each time so for the next two weeks i'm going to do this affirmation and can't wait to get to the third lesson i really have enjoyed these and it will be phenomenal to see where it takes us all the way to the 20th lesson and like i said i'll try to continue to do these every two weeks so if you don't like these lessons then i can maybe offer them in a slower pace but i'm so excited at this point hopefully you guys like them and want to see what happens next anyways let me know what you think so far of the first two lessons of this course and what your impressions are and we'll take it from there there is this incredible discussion from all new thought authors that we've discussed on the channel in how to deal with god and if you read my book the reality revolution the mind-blowing movement to hack your reality i did talk about that but minimally because people that are introduced to this subject they they don't want to talk about god and so for instance reality transurfing really kind of avoids talking about god there are different schematics in reality creation that avoid it they'll call it the universe but as i have progressed and evolved in applying these techniques and principles the portion of the god law aspect of it becomes even more powerful there is so much more to this incredible thing and so i've gone through a process if you listen to the podcast of understanding this concept some people are really turned off i know that i have been before when people start talking about things like god but i don't think he's talking about like you think this is not a biblical discussion this is a way of learning how to think and how to use your thoughts in this god power in conjunction with it so it will be interesting to see how this evolves over time in any case all episodes of the reality revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution